I noticed them here and there all evening. Two black guys were sitting in a booth, and one of them would occasionally walk over to other tables while the other sat still and sipped his drink. Usually the tables the first guy approached were occupied by women. They exchanged a few words, sometimes he quickly left, and sometimes he took out an envelope and showed some documents or photographs. I couldn't make out what exactly it was. I assumed they were selling something and was surprised management didn't stop it. I mentioned it to the people I was with that night, Christy, my wife of two years, and our friends Chris and his wife Liz, Hines and his wife Kim. We discussed what they could do for a few minutes and then forgot about it. After about half an hour, the first guy finally came to our table. I assumed he had exhausted all the tables that were exclusively or predominantly female, and it looked like we might finally find out what was going on. Good evening, guys. How are you doing today? Our responses of fine and fine were said in unison, and he simply looked at each of us and smiled and then continued his speech. A friend of mine is in town for the weekend on business and is looking for company for the evening. He wanted to see if any of you ladies were interested. I was amazed at the audacity of this guy. I mean, really, walk up to a table where all the women are clearly busy and right in front of their men ask if any of them want to go off and have sex with his buddy. I was about to tell him what I thought and where he could go when Liz took the initiative. Why would any of us want to do something like that? She asked. Well, you see, my friend is a born pervert. He has a big farm and knows how to use it, so I thought some of you might want to give it a try. The girls were almost laughing at him at this moment, but he didn't seem to notice. Perhaps all the rejections had made him insensitive to them. Kim took the next step and probably did cause the problems that would follow. And how do we know it's really that well-equipped? The guy pulled out a worn envelope he'd been using all evening, and we finally saw what was in it. He pulled out several photographs, all apparently of his friend, and in all of them it was clear that he was not exaggerating. At this point, all of us men let the girls have their fun, expecting them to say no to this asshole. The girls were clearly impressed by what they saw in the photographs. They ooed and awed loudly and almost comically, and Chris... Hines and I were surprised at how they were treating this guy. Then he made a big offer. Well, ladies, is anyone interested? You will not regret it. Liz and Kim simply shook their heads and giggled, handing the guy back his photos, which he put back in the envelope. He seemed about to leave and try his luck elsewhere when he suddenly stopped and looked at Christy. Perhaps he saw something in her eyes that he had seen before, but he specifically asked her again. What about you, little lady? I didn't see you shake your head. I sat confidently and, as it turned out, foolishly expecting Christy to put this guy in his place, so when she spoke, I didn't so much listen to her as watch his reaction. But his reaction was not what I expected. Instead of a frown or a neutral expression, he broke into a wide smile and walked around the table to Christy. It took a little while for my brain to register that she had said, I'll go. When I finally came to my senses, he had already taken her away from the table and led her to the exit. I don't know if they had some kind of signal or if the second guy just knew the signs, but he was already heading towards the door. Our friends were just as shocked as I was. They seemed to be trying to tell Christy something, but no sound came out. Despite the shock, I managed to take some action and they made it halfway to the door before I grabbed Christy's arm and pulled her away from him. What the hell are you thinking? But a hand twice the size of mine grabbed my arm tightly so that I was forced to let go of Christy. Sorry, buddy, but I can't have you being rough with the ladies. This is my wife, I objected. I'm just trying to stop her from going off with these guys. His grip on my hand did not weaken. He knew he had me under control. I was a pretty big guy, but this guy was the size of an NFL lineman and clearly had the strength to match. He simply turned to Christy. Ma'am, are you leaving of your own free will? He asked her. Christy looked at me, whispered something like, I'm sorry, and then told the guard that she was leaving of her own accord. He turned to me again, feeling sorry for me. Look, buddy, I'm sorry about what's going on in your marriage, 
but my job is to make sure there's no violence. She says she is leaving with them of her own accord, and as long as you are in our territory, I cannot allow you to treat her harshly. He was still holding me when Christy stood on her tiptoes and whispered something in his ear. He looked at her strangely, then looked at me and back at her. Are you sure this is what you want? He asked her. Christy looked at me again and then seemed to make an internal decision, turned to the guard with more confidence than she had shown all evening and said, Yes, I'm sure. With that, she turned and walked towards the guys who were waiting patiently at the door to see how this would all end. Christy, stop, come back. I shouted desperately, but she didn't hesitate. I could only watch as she joined the two guys and headed towards the exit. I assumed that once they were out the door, this giant would let me go and I could catch up with them, because I wasn't going to let that happen if I could prevent it. So as soon as the door closed, I tried to break free, but I was still held tightly. What the hell, man? They left your territory, so let me go. I tried unsuccessfully to break free, but I wasn't making any progress. Finally, I stopped and looked at him with a well expression on my face. Look, man, I'm really sorry, but she asked me to hold you for a few more minutes so you couldn't follow them, and the parking lot is still technically our territory. Realizing that Christy had not only voluntarily left these two guys to sleep with her, but also asked the guard to restrain me, all my strength left me. Our friends stood waiting to see how it would end, still in shock from what had happened. After a few minutes, the guard gently released my hand, and I felt the blood begin to circulate again. I just collapsed on the floor, catching a glimpse of the look of pity on the guard's face before he turned and walked away. I hadn't noticed before, but the noise level in the bar had dropped to zero as my drama unfolded. Realizing that the show was over, the side conversations gradually resumed. I sat on the floor, completely depressed, tears streaming down my face, although I didn't realize it before. How could she do such a thing? Didn't I make her happy? Was I not enough for her? Obviously the answers were no, and it gave me something I could act on. Chris and Heinz Helpetti was forced to my feet and led back to our table, where Kim and Liz tried to soothe the pain I felt from Christie's departure and humiliation. But then I looked up and saw Christie's empty chair and determination filled me. I threw $1.40 on the table and headed for the door. Wait, are you leaving? asked Kim. Certainly. There's no point in staying here, and besides, I have things to do. What about when Christy gets back? Liz added. What about this? Don't you want to at least wait? To make sure she's okay? No, but I'm sure she'll appreciate it if one of you takes her in for the night. I have to go. As I was leaving, I heard the girls asking the guys to stop me and the guys answering. No, not after what she did. I kept my eyes on the door, not wanting to see everyone in the bar feeling sorry for me. I made it to my car before my emotions overwhelmed me again. I felt dizzy and almost passed out, so I just sat in the driver's seat for a few minutes until I felt like I could drive home. As I sat there, I thought how ironic it was that her impulsiveness was one of the things that attracted me to her in the first place. I was halfway to our apartment when my phone rang with Christie's number on the ID. My first thought was that she had changed her mind and needed my help, so I answered the call without any pleasantries and immediately began trying to help her. It turned out that I was wrong. Where are you, Christie? I can pick you up. What hotel are you in and what room? Henry, darling. Thinking that she didn't want me to go to the room, I changed tactics. Can you leave? Just tell me the name of the hotel and I'll pick you up from outside. Honey, please listen to me. Darling, I'm not leaving. I want to stay and I'm going to do it. I just wanted to call and tell you that I hope you understand that this has nothing to do with you or how much I love you. It's just something I have to do and I wish you could tell me that you understand and that it's okay. Christy, please don't do this. I have to, Henry, but it won't hurt us. It's just one time, and it will only be sex. I promise. At this moment, I was completely stunned. Not only did she leave me in front of our friends and the entire bar, but now she calls me to rub her nose in it and has the nerve to ask me to tell her I'm okay with it. 
I couldn't believe the woman I fell in love with would do this to me. I realized that nothing was worth fighting for, so I told her I understood, but I meant it in a completely different way than she thought. She was clearly excited. Oh, thank you, honey, thank you. I'll see you as soon as I'm done and spend the rest of my life proving to you how much I love you. With that, the call ended and all the sadness and depression I was feeling suddenly disappeared. I blocked out the love I felt for her just hours ago, and it was replaced with a grim determination to leave it behind. Once I got to the apartment, I pulled out my luggage and laid out all three suitcases on the bed. We didn't have a lot of stuff, and what was mine took up much less space than Christie's stuff. I thought that everything would fit in these three suitcases, but if not, I was sure that I would not need the things that would have to be left behind. I was in no hurry. I wasn't going to just disappear. In fact, I was waiting for Christy to feel as much pain as I felt when she walked out the door of the bar, and she had to be here for me to feel it. I had already filled two suitcases and was halfway through the last one when I heard the front door open and quietly close. Apparently, she saw that the light was on, so she knew that I was awake and called me. Did you have a good time? I asked. I guess I didn't put as much sarcasm in as I thought because she responded like she just got back from a party or something. Oh God, yes. She walked through the bedroom doorway and I glanced at her. Her hair and makeup were a mess and her clothes looked a little shabby. She looked like she was having a good time. The smile on her face quickly faded when she saw me packing my things. What? What are you doing, honey? I'm leaving and filing for divorce. She came towards me and tried to stop me from packing further, but I grabbed her wrist and removed her hand. It reminded me of the guard who grabbed my arm, and I suddenly became angry again. Don't touch me. But Henry, you said that you understood that this was just a one-time thing that I needed to try, and then I would only be yours. No, I realized that you were going to sleep with these guys no matter what I said or how I felt, so there was no point in wasting time talking about it. You actually slept with both of them, right? Not only with Mr. Big? Yeah, well, I mean, it wouldn't be fair to leave Desmond with nothing after he's done most of the work. Certainly. I wouldn't want the bastard who preyed on married women to get hurt. This time my sarcasm was visible from space. Darling, please don't leave me. I've always wanted to try one this big, but I never had the chance until I met you. And then, I've never been with a black guy. When Desmond showed me the photo, I just couldn't resist. But now I did it, and it's behind me, and I'm only yours, and I'll do anything to make amends. First of all, Christy, you should have been mine forever. This was part of a wedding a couple of years ago. So making a promise again after you've already broken, it doesn't mean anything. And how are you going to make up for this? Do you realize how inadequate this all makes me feel? but I'll give you a chance. Just tell me the hotel and the room they took you to and I promise I'll think about leaving this behind. But no guarantees. I'm sorry, honey, but I won't tell you this. I continued packing my things. So much for doing everything to make amends. Darling, please. If I tell you where they are, you'll do something dangerous and I don't want you to get hurt. After all, there are two of them and besides, they are not worth getting into trouble. It's not your decision, Christy. I decide what I will do and whether it is worth it. So I'll ask again, hotel and room. I'm sorry, dear, but when we got married, I promised to protect you, and I will, even from myself. I won't let you get hurt, unless you're the one causing the pain, apparently. It seemed to work as expected. Okay, Christy, but remember that it was your choice. I continued packing my things while Christy tried to convince me to stop and stay with her. Although she no longer tried to stop me physically, no matter how many times I told her that I wouldn't stay with her, she kept convincing me that it was just sex and that it was something she had to do, but she only loved me. When she finally got to the classic, it didn't mean anything. Well, that meant a hell of a lot to me, Christy. Our sex life was very important to me. I didn't know it meant so little to you, but it was one of those things that made you special, that only I had access to your body and you just gave it away. And not only that, you did it in the most humiliating way possible. 
we were with our best friends, for God's sake. I know it, darling, and I'm sorry, but I swear it will never happen again. I just went crazy for a while. But now I've done it, and it's out of my system. What else is there? What do you mean? What else haven't you tried, and what one day will you have to do? Threesome. Sex with a group of men. Satisfaction of the entire football team. Oh my God, Christy, I can't believe you did this. This whole damn bar just looked at me with pity and shame while you walked out without even looking back at me. She was openly crying by this point. If I had looked back, I probably wouldn't have been able to do it, and I was determined. But please, darling, please don't leave me. I love you so much. If this is how you express love, I'm not interested. Honestly, even if you told me where to find them, I still wouldn't stay. I may forgive you one day, Christy, but I will never forget what you did and, more importantly, how it made me feel. It took me two trips, but I loaded my bags into the car and left. When I returned the second time, Christy was still lying on the floor. All she could do was look up at me and mutter, Please, please don't go, honey. Please. Despite what happened, what she did, I still felt like a complete idiot leaving like that. It didn't make me reconsider my decision, but I still felt bad. I assumed it was because even though I couldn't be with her anymore, I still loved her. I was disoriented when I woke up in the hotel. I found myself more tired than I thought. Apparently, the adrenaline disappeared, and as soon as it did, I fell. It was almost noon when I woke up. Luckily, I paid for two days in advance, but I knew that our, my, bank account wouldn't allow me to stay in a hotel for long. I needed to find a place to stay. One of the problems was that there were three months left on the rent of the apartment Christie and I shared. There definitely weren't enough funds to pay for both that and a new apartment, so I had to decide whether to give up the apartment or come up with another plan. Christie and I actually had very few assets. We each had a car in our own name and corresponding payments, so it was probably parity. The bank account was small, and besides, there was only furniture that we bought, and I wasn't particularly interested in it. I didn't hate her, I just didn't care. I didn't want to drag other couples into this, but Chris and Hines were my best friends for many years, long before all our wives. Chris and Liz were married for five years, Hines and Kim for almost four. Christy and I were the last to join this club. I finally turned on my phone, finding many messages from Christy and a few from the guys and their wives. They mostly encouraged me not to do anything rash, and one message from Chris offering any help had an effect on me. So I called and Liz answered, and I asked her for asylum. Let's do it, Henry. You can stay in our guest room for a while, but I won't hide you from Christy. She drives everyone crazy by asking if we've heard from you. I'll tell her that you're here and that you're okay, and I expect you to at least be polite to her. Yes, she made a mistake, but she didn't kill anyone, so let's be reasonable, okay? I agreed to her terms and spent the next morning moving from the hotel to their guest room. My boss didn't mind me taking the morning off if I stayed late one day that week to catch up. What a concern. I went to work and stayed late that evening to get my obligations done right away, and it had the added bonus of distracting me from the weekend's events. It was almost 10 p.m. when I pulled up to Chris and Liz's house. I was tired and ready for a good rest. Of course, this didn't happen. Christy, why are you here? Didn't you understand when I left that I didn't want to see you? Sorry, honey, but I feel bad without you. I can't sleep and I can't eat. We need to talk to try to work things out. I told you I don't want to settle this. But apparently, my opinion has ceased to be important to you. Okay, I deserve it, but please, darling, don't end this just because I made a stupid choice. We love each other and can somehow get through this. I gave you a chance that night, Christy. I asked where those bastards were and you refused to tell me. The only chance I had to regain some of my dignity was taken from me by you. Right now, I need you to leave me alone so I can decide if I still have feelings for you. Don't say that, dear, please. I was stupid, okay, really stupid. But should one bad choice ruin our life together? Christy, wars have been started over decisions less stupid than what you did. And honestly, 
I don't think you understand how much you hurt me. I promised Liz I'd be nice to you, but I can't keep it now. I need you to leave. Right now. Christy lowered her head and slowly turned towards the exit. I waited in the living room while Liz met her in the kitchen. They hugged and whispered something to each other, and then Christy walked away, stopping at the door just a moment to turn and tell me she loved me, and then she left. My composure left me and I collapsed on the sofa. Liz sat next to me while Chris stood in the hallway doorway. I didn't know how long he stood there. You were great, Henry. Thank you for being as kind as you could. I know it wasn't easy. I don't deserve this, Liz. I'm a good guy and tried to make her happy. I shouldn't suffer like this. No, it shouldn't, and even though it's her fault, she suffers too. She never imagined that you would leave because of this. What the hell did she think I would do? She knew you would be angry, but she thought it would all calm down with time. She thought you would be angry, and she would have to do everything right to show you how much she loved you and probably spend the next few years having sex with you. So she thought about it. Did she really think about how much she thought she could get by? No, Henry. All this happened after this happened. What did she tell you, Liz? She told me the same thing she told you, that the combination of sex with a black guy and his big equipment was too attractive for her to refuse. Her mind was focused only on this. She could never have asked the guard to restrain you any other way. Damn, that made me so angry. Was the sex at least terrible? Do you want me to tell the truth or what you want to hear? I think that answers the question. Forget. But Henry, no matter how good the sex was, she says she would never trade what you have for this. It was good once, but that's it. But she still traded me for, for, for this. But she didn't know what exactly she was doing. Well, everyone makes choices, and when we make choices, we choose the consequences, even if we don't know what they will be. You are right. But then, when she started to think more rationally about what she had done, she still thought that you could overcome it. She thought that if she treated it as something insignificant, as something fun but not important to her, you would be angry, but in the end you would be able to get over it. Kim and I were hoping for it too, but Chris and Hines said it wasn't possible. Looks like they were right. They know me well, Liz. I don't see a way to survive this. She did this so deliberately, she left right in front of my eyes and asked the guard to hold me back so she could sneak away. Then she called me to try to get me to agree. She's had so many chances to figure out that I'm not okay with this, and every time she chooses against me. I know it seems like it, but she was out of her mind, you know. It was like temporary insanity. Haven't you ever had that experience where you just lost sight of what could happen? Liz, I appreciate you defending her. I know you two have become good friends, and I wouldn't expect anything less. I'm your friend too, Henry, and I know how much you love her. Anyway, it's not the same as when I played video games all night instead of writing a history essay. We need to be adults, and everyone needs to understand that what she did will end the way it did. In my mind, I know you're right, but my heart says you two are so good together, and thinks that if you can get over this and forgive her, you'll be very happy. You may be right, Liz, but most likely I will constantly think about what will happen next. I never want to go to a club again for fear of something like this happening since she obviously can't control her base desires. I'm just not going to live like this. She made her choice, and now I have to do what's right for me. Sorry, I'm tired and need to sleep. The rest of Christie's story is predictable. We must give her credit for doing everything possible to reconcile us, but I was completely against it. It was difficult because I still loved her, and when you get divorced, you not only lose your wife, you lose all the hopes and dreams you had and all the plans you made. We talked about children and even grandchildren. We talked about places we wanted to visit and all the things we wanted to do before starting a family. Now all this has disappeared. None of this will happen, at least not for us together. In fact, it was in those moments when I thought about these things that the desire to stay together was strongest. Christy and I were so in sync on these things like two halves of a whole. But I just couldn't find a way to get over what she did. The divorce was finalized three months later. 
Christy asked to talk to me again. Nothing was required of me. It was just a request, and I decided I could listen to what she had to say. We met immediately after the hearing and were given a private room. We stood face to face. Henry, I don't know if I said it then, but I'm really sorry. Please don't think that what I did means I didn't love you with all my heart. I think how much we loved each other gave me the idea that I could do what I did and everything would be okay. Anyway, I just wanted to say again that I'm sorry and I'll regret this for the rest of my life. I'll be sorry too, Christy, but I hope you can move on. I still wish you all the best. Despite what happened, you are a good person and deserve to be happy. Thank you, this means a lot to me. I'm, uh, leaving town. My Aunt Lori got me a job in the office where she works. I'm moving to Cincinnati next week and looking to start over. If you're ever in town, I hope we can meet and talk, and if you ever want to give me another chance, well, just let me know, okay? I was out of breath, so I could only nod. How to react when you realize that this is probably the last time you will see the woman who is still the love of your life. I didn't regret my decision, rather I regretted everything that happened. She came up and hugged me one last time. We haven't spoken much in the last couple of months, let alone touched, and I admit it felt good to hold her one more time. And then, as if by magic, she moved away and walked out the door without a word. All I felt was emptiness. It took another three months before I started going out again. I had no intentions of getting into a relationship right now, but I was tired of sitting at home. I spent evenings with Chris and Hines, and with Liz and Kim. They brought friends they thought I might like, and they didn't really hide their intentions. Although I wasn't ready for anything serious, I enjoyed interacting with different women and dancing with them. I allowed myself some light-hearted fun, and by that I mean we were all talking and dancing, and I wasn't worried about impressing anyone. They were all nice, but there was no spark, and when the night ended, so did our relationship. I also got used to going out alone sometimes. I found some comfort in being alone. Not that I was alone as the club was usually quite lively, but none of them were my responsibility, and I liked that. One of the bartenders at the club was a woman named Tasha who I went to high school with. She had been working here for some time, although she was not there that night. You know, that night. We were nothing more than acquaintances before, but on those evenings when I came alone, we began to build what seemed like a friendship, and she made it clear that she wanted more in the future. It was about ten months after Christy left with those guys when I ran into them again. They were back at the club, and I assumed they were planning to repeat their little scheme, although at the moment they were just sitting, drinking, and looking around. They were probably looking out for targets, I thought. Tasha noticed that I was looking in their direction and asked about my interest. Why are you staring at Desmond and Richard? I turned to her, surprised that she knew their names. Do you know them? Certainly. They come here all the time. Do you know them? Personally, no. How do you say, all the time? I was under the impression that they were from out of town and only came here on business from time to time. I don't know where you got this from, but they work in a warehouse on the outskirts of the city, not far from the highway. So they are local. Yes, for many years now. They come here to meet women, and they do it well. They say Richard just has a gun there. I looked at her with an expression, why should I know that? But she didn't seem to notice. I didn't think this was a place for dating. Are there many single women here? Everything is fine with us, although they usually come in groups. But that doesn't mean those guys are limited to single women. I think they prefer married people. I tried not to show how angry this made me. It seems risky. I can't imagine husbands being happy with this. I think husbands will never know. These guys don't brag, and I doubt the wives go home and talk about it. Of course, some can. I heard that there are such people, but in general, I think all this remains a secret. You don't seem to mind this. I don't see any harm in this. The wife has a little fun, and the husband doesn't know about it, so it doesn't hurt him. If she goes out with her friends, it means she wasn't going to be home with him anyway, so he has nothing to lose. I imagine those husbands get some decent sex out of guilt, so they actually win in the end. 
I thought about her words and realized that nothing would work out between us. If she thinks it's okay for other wives to do it, she probably won't think twice about doing it herself. It was sad. Tasha continued talking when I didn't respond. As far as I know, they only did this once to a woman while her husband was at the club. It became a big problem and almost became violent, so they don't do it anymore. That night I had a day off, but it was good that Victor was here. I heard that the wife even asked him to keep her husband so that she could leave with the guys. I turned towards her very slowly, and I can only imagine what she saw on my face and in my eyes at that moment. Yes, she did, in fact. My tone and facial expression must have made her understand everything, because she suddenly understood everything. Her hand flew up to her mouth, in that gesture that women always make when they are surprised. Oh my God, Henry, it was you and Christy, wasn't it? I didn't know. I'm really sorry. I heard that she cheated on you, but I didn't realize. She suddenly fell silent, apparently not knowing what else to say. Really, what more could be said? I stood up from the bar and headed outside, taking out my cell phone. I quickly called to get the process started and then sat down to wait. I didn't realize the need for revenge until I found out it was all a scam. Of course, Christy agreed to their offer and went with them voluntarily, and that won't change anything, but I think she did it under the impression that they were really just guys from out of town looking for luck, and we wouldn't see them again, and it will somehow make it better. I found their car in the parking lot. Not wanting to perpetuate stereotypes, but when I saw the Cadillac with the lowered suspension and ridiculous chrome rims, I was pretty sure it was theirs. Since they had not started hunting yet, I was confident that I had time before they came out, unless they got lucky very early. I don't know what happened inside the club, but after almost an hour they finally came out, pushing a slightly tipsy friend in my direction. Yes, I guessed the car correctly, and I was leaning on the driver's side door as they approached. Hey, man, said Desmond, who was apparently doing the talking for the dynamic duo. Get your ass off my car. I ignored him and focused on the slightly tipsy girl they met inside. As much as she deserved what was coming to her, I didn't want the woman to get hurt, and I was sure her husband didn't deserve it either. Oh yeah, I could see the wedding ring on her finger. I addressed her directly in a tone that made it clear that this was not a request. Honey, I think it's better for you to find another place, for example, at home with your husband. You know, the person to whom you promised to give up all others. I don't know what she did after that, but quickly assessing the situation, she decided to follow my advice, and the last thing I saw was her back as she returned to the club, despite the objections of Desmond and Richard. When she left, the guys seemed a little angry and turned to me with intent clearly visible in their eyes. What the fuck, man? Why did you send our girl away? It wasn't your girl, it was her husband's wench, and all I did was remind her of it. Do I know you, man? You seem familiar to me. We met, but it was a long time ago. Let's say ten months ago. Desmond wasn't stupid. I saw him rummaging through his memory, and it didn't take him long to understand. I know who you are. Damn, Richie, it's that girl's husband the one who asked the guard to hold him back so she could be with us. Listen, where is she? I wouldn't mind fucking her again, and since you sent our girl away, you owe us a replacement. Sorry, guys, she's far away from here now. Oh, are you separated? What a pity. I wasn't impressed by their sincerity. Well, once you try black, you'll never go back, hee <laughs> hee. Well, once she tried black, I didn't want her back although that would be true regardless of your color. So, what is this matter? Do you think you need payback, revenge, or something? You think your sorry ass can handle the two of us? They began to move towards me with clear intentions. Probably not, but I don't intend to. At least not alone. Those bastards were so focused on me that they didn't notice my friends sneaking up behind me, and suddenly both were held tightly by three of my friends each. They began to struggle, but Heinz was big and strong and Rick was just as tough, and soon they were on their knees with their hands tied behind their backs with plastic ties. Suddenly they lost confidence. Look man, we just made an offer, okay? She herself agreed. 
We just wanted some sex, man. And she said, yes, it's her fault, not ours. Oh, I was angry with her, but I dealt with her. She's not my problem anymore. But you and people like you are a damn disaster to society, and I intend to make sure you never do it again. Download them, guys. My friends threw the bastards into the back of Jed's pickup, tightly binding their legs and chaining them to the side in case they tried to escape. And about an hour later, we pulled up in a remote part of the county. Jed's family had a farm nearby, and he led us down a long gravel and dirt road that led us to a large forest. We were miles away from everything and completely out of sight. The guys pulled our victims out of the truck, not particularly caring about doing it carefully. I enjoyed the fear in their eyes. I guess they never thought that hunting for casual sex would lead them to this situation. So, I said lightly, hoping they would think I was less serious than I actually was. The question is how best to rid society of your predatory habits. Do you play golf? Uh, no, never, Desmond said, clearly not understanding what I was getting at. Well, Desmond, during a golf tournament, each player plays 18 Lunok, but they cannot play all holes at the same time. So at some point, the leader ends the game and sets his final score, while the other players are still playing, sometimes for quite a long time. Okay, so what? When this happens, commentators use the phrase, leader in the club, which means that this player has finished the game and can no longer improve his score, so he is simply waiting for other players to pass him. Is it clear? I think so, but why are you talking about it? I was trying to decide how best to get rid of you too. My first intention that I mentioned is to simply cut you off your equipment, bandage them up, and send you on your way. They expressed horror at the mere mention of the idea. I continued but it can create a lot of problems if you decide to talk about what happened. And when you go to the doctor, you almost have to say something, right? All my friends seemed to agree, although Desmond and Richard were silent. So my second option, which I'm increasingly liking, is to just kill you both and be done with it. Dead men don't tell stories and all that. Desmond looked even more horrified at this prospect but Richard's expression showed that he would rather die than live without his manhood. I've heard that some guys' self-esteem is completely dependent on their size, but that's going too far. Come on, man, we just made an offer. You can't kill us for this. It was just sex, dude. It's not like she never had another, right? You're not helping your cause, Desmond. Like I said, I've already dealt with it. My task now is to deal with you. I'm sick of people like you who think they can lure married women into bed and think they can get away with it. No, it's time to teach you a lesson, and perhaps others like you will change their behavior when I make an example of you. I motioned for the rest of the party to join me in a private conversation nearby. The goal was simply to make them a little nervous. The truth is that I'm not particularly violent, and as much as I wanted to hurt them, that wasn't my intention. Well, at least it won't cause permanent harm. We made them sweat for about an hour, and the idea was to make them think that we had changed our minds about killing or maiming them. And when we returned, whatever they were in the mood for resistance, it disappeared. Okay, guys, my friends convinced me not to kill or maim you. Oh, thank God, Desmond breathed. However, you will not get away unpunished. Here's the thing, guys. Now you will get a fair thrashing. We, of course, will deny it and confirm each other's alibi. But if a cop even happens to stop by my house to talk about what happened to you, my friends will find you again, and one of the first two options will be fulfilled. Got it. Yes, man, yes, we won't say a word. And I promise that we will keep an eye on you. Thanks to your driver's license, we know where you live, and we already know where you work. If any of my friends, and I have a lot of friends, see you doing this shit with married women again, that will be the end of it. Meet all the single women you want, but go with the married ones, and I promise you will regret it. Have questions. Is there anything we can do to avoid being beaten? Anything? Okay, that little evil part of the brain that everyone has kicked in at that moment, and I decided to give them a chance. It wasn't a good chance, but still a chance. Of course, Desmond, I have exactly what I need. Desmond smiled, perhaps seeing the promised beating go away. 
All you have to do is satisfy your friend until he is satisfied, and then have him do the same to you. Desmond and Richard looked at each other, then looked at me again, and Desmond immediately asked to begin the beating. And they really got a beating. There were ten of us, and we took out our aggression on them. We carefully avoided fatal blows. If nothing else, they will remember it for a long time. We drove them back into town and dumped them on the sidewalk next to the hospital, being careful not to go into the parking lot or be seen by the security cameras. The next morning, we were on the news as victims of an attack by unknown assailants and possibly a robbery gone wrong. The matter went cold when the boys said that the attackers were strangers to them and, in their opinion, it was a random attack. And here we are, a year after that terrible night. I somehow managed not to become completely suspicious of all women, but it wasn't easy. Rumor has it that Christy recently met someone and they started dating. It's still early, but looks promising. Desmond and Richard seem to have disappeared. At least they no longer work in a warehouse and their apartments are empty. I guess they are running their scams in another city. Sometimes I think I should have rid the world of those two bastards more completely. I think about this often and sometimes regret my choice. In the end, I had to find a new place to stay. Tasha finally started acting more assertive and my polite refusals were not having the desired effect, so I finally told her that nothing would happen between us since she thought it was normal for a wife to cheat on her husband behind his back. She tried to assure me that she wouldn't do that herself, but I didn't believe her. Wait, wait a second. Karen, here, my girlfriend just arrived. This is actually our fourth date and it seems like things are getting pretty serious. We haven't been intimate yet, but on our last date, I felt strong signals that she was ready for this step. And so tonight, we will have a couple of drinks, and then dinner at my house, and hopefully dessert. Hello, dear, sorry for being late. Have you been waiting long? Not today. You, too long. Her sly smile let me know that she understood what I meant, and as she leaned down to kiss me, her hand slid, not entirely lightly, over my jeans, and she whispered in my ear, At least one of your waits will end tonight, big boy. Oh yeah, I like it. 